Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel for the sixth D&D campaign story. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and follow the playlist link in the description so you can start at the beginning and know all the details up till now. Also, shout out to Zaley for helping me last time since I was separated from the action. Staring at the now still surface of the pool, the party discusses what they should do in order to figure out if Torrin survived the fall. The alchemist and artificer are not much help, so Barakas comes up with an idea. Let's throw something down to Torrin, and if he's there, he'll throw it back up. They look around and find an old, discolored reptilian scale. Barakas writes, is it safe? And tosses the scale into the pool where it vanishes. Eh, not a surprise at this point. After a few minutes, the scale plops through the surface of the pool and lands on the floor with some etching that make out the word jump. Barakas jumps in and also disappears from sight. Our druid is absolutely terrified of deep water and is unwilling to go in. Meanwhile, down below, Barakas lands on top of me and we have to figure out how to convince the other people above that it's still safe to jump and also to drag the druid with them. We end up riding on the wolf that was down there with us, wrapping it in the hemp and rope I'd cut from my body, damn critical slate, and threw it upwards. As it vanished from sight on our end, it pops back into view up top. Everyone is at last convinced to take the plunge and do so literally as the fall is 20 feet straight down. Important detail I forgot to mention. They take their falling damage and when the grumbling subsides, get up and walk around the new dark area. The party explore several rooms, finding an actual treasure chest and many skeletons in the first room. Still traumatized by the mimic incident, the party has the paladin trample each skeleton, cracking their skulls to make sure they're really dead. There's then a long argument about how to best trigger the mimic. This takes almost an hour. Finally, Barakas is over it and just puts one of his severed fingers on the chest. When it doesn't react, he shrugs and says, Barakas thinks it's just a chest. We open it and behold, treasure! The second and third rooms we explored both had fights. First one was a zombie ogre and an escort of several zombies. The party was accidentally in a choke point and the zombie ogre couldn't easily get to anyone except the paladin who was ready to go toe to toe. This ended up as a double advantage because the zombie allies were unable to get past the zombie ogre's bulk. We won and went into the next room which is at the end of a corridor that took a sharp left turn into an open room that housed several cave bears. Our ranger failed her stealth check and the bears attack. The corner really limits the party's ability to fight but the druid as always starts pulling some creative tricks. She wild shapes into a spider and climbs up onto the ceiling, shoots webbing, drops down to maul some bears. She gets beat up pretty badly, but by that time the paladin does the usual hold the line crap that he does and they slowly but surely win. When the bears are dead, the party notices the room is full of decaying armor suits and there's another chest in the corner. Did someone say mimic mode? Oh yeah, the party spends another hour debating how to open the chest without getting bitten. This time the druid walks up and gives it a really hard smack with her quarterstaff. Nothing happens happens other than the chest flying backwards, opening and spilling coins everywhere. Silly druid. The players decide to split the treasure fairly among everyone present, including the NPCs, and the halls were impressive. Out of gratitude, both vendors offered discounts at their stores once they all got back to Peace Lun. Turns out charity is sometimes rewarded, eh? The fourth room is a huge, ominous looking cavern, whoo, scary, that extends into darkness, marking the first time that the party is unable to see how far something actually goes. The ground is stone and covered with moss. There are numerous skeletons hanging on the walls between more decaying suits of armor, and the party is getting the creeps! Baraka stealthily investigates the room, creeping so far into its depths that we can't see him. He returns significantly more quickly than he left, but made both of his stealth rolls. He describes the far side of the room as containing a huge reptilian creature that has been badly wounded, and a lone figure dressed in dark clothes tending to it. We have no idea what the thing is, but we assume at this point that no one and nothing down here wants to have a tea party. Everyone sneaks into the room, establishing their position. I go last as I have a disadvantage to stealth from my armor. Magically, even I manage to make it into position at the front of the room before the figure notices we're all here. It turns around and lowers its hood, revealing a nest of snakes on its head. Not a great feeling. Of course, it had to be a Medusa. Of course. Our ranger's mastiff is the first to fail a constitution save against petrification, but does badly enough she turns immediately to stone. Yikes. Everyone before me makes their save. I roll my dice and immediately turn to stone too. The fight begins. Barakas immediately rips off a segment of his shirt and binds it over his eyes while everyone else closes their eyes after giggling at the ripping of the shirt. Turns out there can still be humor in imminent death. The alchemist turns out to be a warlock who cannot land a hit to save her life. The artificer is some kind of witch archer who uses arrows with magic effects but who spent the entire fight missing the Medusa. Come on guys, you're DMPCs for f***ing sake. Now that things are looking really bad, remember in the last video where I told you guys that there were rays of light off the gem puzzle that imbued the players with an undisclosed power? I'd 
absorb the red light, which removes petrification after one round. So you can imagine the surprise when I suddenly burst out of stone and start advancing again. The Medusa was fairly hard to hit, but not so good at dealing damage. Most of us had disadvantage to hit, so you can imagine how often we didn't. When we weakened her enough, her dragon reptile thing got up and started mauling us. Of course! I finally got the idea to use Channel Divinity to light the surface of my metal shield to show the Medusa her own reflection. She saves the first round, but ends up petrifying herself. Her helper, we still weren't sure what it was at that point, hit the druid and me with a lightning breath that caused enough damage to down us both instantly. Not that we were that healthy to begin with. Our ranger pulls an incredible battle medic move and manages to get both of us on our feet, and we proceed to mash this thing into the ground. The spell archer artificer finally gets some hits in, shoots an arrow that creates a massive ice wall to block the monster's escape. Could you have done that a little sooner, honey? <sighs> it was rough. Someone identifies the thing we killed as a Bahir, and we thanked our individual gods that it wasn't at full murder capacity. Baraka suddenly gets this glowing energy at the tips of his fingers and gains the ability to turn creatures back from petrification over a period of two days. He immediately expends several charges on Boblia, the Mastiff, and she happily barks. Of course, our ranger was f***ing ecstatic to have her lovely pet back. Baraka suddenly decides he wants to unpetrify the Medusa. Everyone else disagrees so vehemently that the druid and I immediately run over to the statue and start attacking her head until it crumbles into dust. No, 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 no. Turns out he was just kidding. We take a much needed rest and drag ourselves out of the tree, making the several days trip back to Peace Line. We make one to two stops along the way so Barakas can unpetrify some of the statues we found in the forest, but we left them to reflesh on their own time. Hopefully they're all right. This ends the sixth campaign story. Tune in next time to see what happens when the players, realizing they can own real estate, are unleashed upon Peaceland's unsuspecting realtors. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a big thumbs up. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the little bell so you get alerted when I post. I'll see you guys next time.